fellow Redditors, what was a moment where you thought a person you knew might be an actual psychopath? When I was about 7 or 8 there was a kid who was about 6. We found a baby bird that fell out of its nest. In the time it took for me to go home and tell an adult he put it in the road and ran over it on his bike and laughed. Last I heard Hess in jail for beating his girlfriend. Fuck you Kevin. When he told me he was a psychopath. Not even kidding. He's a pretty cool guy though and goes to therapy and everything for it. He does his best to relate to people and judge emotion but it's difficult for him to hold relationships. Pretty smart and is doing the best he can. Hopefully one of the more light-hearted stories on here. I'm a college librarian. He was one of my students who came in a lot. He was super charming and good looking and altogether empty inside, no depth, no emotions, no regard for others. One of our staff straight up said, that boy's a psychopath, she had been a social worker so I trusted her opinion and agreed. He collected types of women, he told me about seducing a female, married, military chaplain and getting her to do sexual things she didn't want to. Then he got bored with her and moved on. He eventually got his master's degree and now works on the military base making big bucks, getting everyone else to do his work for him. Sometimes psychopaths are dangerous in other ways. I think one of my university professors was a sociopath. He was brilliant in his field but just didn't function correctly as a human. He set up weird rules of interaction for office hours. He had huge personal bias on people based on things like haircuts. There were rumors of him being the reason for suicides even, due to the way he talked to people that failed final exams, like the last oral exam after you failed the written one three times. He would be smiling, smirking, like a small boy whose grandma found him with the hand in the cookie jar, while telling people their years of education were lost. When I was 8 I let my older cousin who was probably 11 or 12 at the time hold my hamster, she was begin really rough with it so I told her to put it back into its cage. She got really mad after this and just stared at me for about 2 minutes before she turned around and threw my hamster into the wall. My poor hamster died instantly and I was crying because my hamster had just gotten murdered. I knew after she threw it something was extremely wrong with her and my mom made my aunt come and pick her up and she wasn't allowed to be near any animals after this. It's been almost 4 years since I've talked to her but apparently she gets into fights almost weekly, and beats somebody so bad they had to go to EER. She's in therapy and has spent time in juvenile detention. All of my other cousins are afraid of her and many of us think she's going to eventually kill somebody, I honestly think the best place for her would be a mental health hospital. Top food chain company implements auto cash to manage petty cash efficiently with transparency, with hassle-free accounting. Mobile petty cash invoice uploads and seamless integration with ERPs. But what makes her a bit of an anomaly, is that the voices in her head tell her to do good things and how other people might be feeling. Tip a little extra, your friend needs a hug right now. Go help your coworker with their work, compliment the shoes, they are new, you're doing just fine etc it's quite interesting i met an individual who later pled guilty to his involvement in about 14 murders during an interview about his childhood and personal life it became very apparent that he had no interest in other people and that they were basically npcs to him even his girlfriend and child he was in a gang and his behavior was basically shadowing the other guys with status he had a girlfriend because that's what the other guys did he had a fancy car. He wore the right clothes. The other guys figured out early on that he was not bothered by murder or gunfights, so he was their hitter. During the interview, he was perfectly polite, but utterly flat in his affect and didn't attempt to dissemble or minimize a lot of terrible things that happened to him or the things he'd done. It made for an interesting interview. This one won't be crazy or frightening, but I remember the point at which I recognized sociopathy in my ex. We sat down on his bed at night and I asked him to tell me things about himself, because, even though we were dating I knew nothing about him. He could not give an answer beyond surface level on any emotional topic. I looked in his eyes and saw nothingness. 
I realized why I could never emotionally read him or get any sort of feel. He did tell me after we broke up that he can't feel emotions and how much it sucks. I didn't understand this until much later, before we dated, I remember him telling me how manipulative he is, with a smile. He lied constantly about everything and had 15 other relationships before me, all ending within a month. Yes, an obvious red flag that I ignored. He would jump from religion to atheism every other month. He would repeat cycles over and over. He was known by everyone and liked by many. Very charming. Had a flirty personality. Loved risk taking for no reason. Always got into trouble. Played soccer with a guy in high school that had a real short temper and enjoyed playing the sport as rough as possible, even at practice. Coaches had to tell him to calm down all the time. Everyone hated him and stayed away from him. Several years later he murdered a classmate of mine over some weed. He hid the body under a pile of leaves in his backyard. When I heard the news, I wasn't surprised in the least. In high school we had a kid that was completely insane would do things like jump out of a second story window because he didn't like a substitute teacher. There were stories from a brief couple years he had left the area, moved away during middle school, such as getting kicked out of a Catholic school by writing satanic signs in his blood or a military academy for using a Nazi ceremonial sword to chase kids down the hall. Those were considered stories by most who hadn't observed him in class. We all thought he was insane. Few years later I'm in college and a friend tells me a news article is about my hometown. Local man robs grave to make skull bomb. One guess who it was. One of my neighbors when I was little had some hamsters. One day I was at her house and she started squeezing them and making them poop because she thought it was funny. She just kept squeezing them harder and harder. I told her to stop or she might hurt them and she started laughing. The next day I asked her grandma what happened to her hamsters and she told me they all died. Another time we were making PB and J sandwiches in her room, I'd cry lol, and she cornered me with the knife while laughing. I looked her up a few years ago and found her mugshot. I was in the military and my roommate was overprotective over all of my stuff, never wanted me to share, it was either his or mine. Couch, remote, TV, PS4. Like eyes can't be on the TV together. Simple email submit. Enter for a chance to win. Offer converts on email submit. Fingers, paws and legs in the open courtyard by us so that the other mice learn their place by hearing its screams. I wasn't home when this happened, I was on base. Other housemates explained in detail when I got there warning me. Left the next day. Edit, spelling and clarity. Edit, we didn't start off this way. This was months in it during hard times in our service. Different branches. He changed. I'm pretty sure an ex of mine is a psychopath. He had signs of it, like being manipulative, very selfish, no empathy, constant lying. I think the moment I twigged was when he came home early from work and said he'd been sent home because he told his boss I had hung myself the night before. I asked him why he'd said that and he just shrugged. 